Um, Come the hell on. Isn't this the kind of depth that wins championships? Isn't this the kind of depth where you're like, you like as much as it sucks that Josh Levo played 10 games last yeah. year, if you're saying we can sit a guy, we can confidently sit a guy yep. who is capable of scoring 15 to 20 goals at, at his top end scoring, yes. right? You, if you were, if Josh Levo were playing this season with the Leafs, I would expect at least 12 goals. Mm-hmm. If you can sit a guy like that confidently, that's good, right? Well, I keep going back to, well, and yes, absolutely. But they played Levo on the power play even when they like sort of barely even trust him, uh, trusted him to put him in the lineup. Because he's a killer shot. Soshnikov killed penalties and was occasionally on the power play. Yeah. Kapanen's both. Yeah. Um, but yes, this is... I'm not saying the Leafs are going to win a cup. I'm not saying the Leafs are better than the Penguins. But this is vaguely what a championship team looks like. Yeah. You know, there are. it's not perfect. No. It's no. not perfect. Backup is a question mark. You'd like their... Defense to be a little bit better, mm-hmm. but cup it's win- really good though. <laughs> but cup winning teams also manage their assets to the point where if you have a glut, that you use that to address the areas of need. And that's been my my point with the with the Leafs. You can put Ron Hainsey on your top pairing. Doesn't mean it's a good move. I mean he mm-hmm. may he may be adequate in that position and it's a good stopgap. But it's really because. They couldn't make something work during the off season to get a Chris Tanev or uh, Travis or, Hamonic or Travis. Ham- I mean, Travis. Tra- I mean, Chris you know, Hamonic. you know that JVR is on the block because everybody. I mean, it was at the draft. Everybody was saying JVR was offered in a Hamonic deal, and uh, you know they went the other direction. They went the other direction and took three draft picks, which is is a commentary on the Islanders and the fact that you know. The, they're supposedly trying to keep John Tavares, and they have a chance to get a winger who could play with John Tavares and probably score 40 goals if he was on Tavares' line, and instead they go out and they get Eberle, who he played in the World Junior with, so I, I get that, that was a move. But they got rid of all this salary, they traded a first-round pick to get Grabowski's money off the, off the... And then what they do is they trade one of their best defensemen, so it's like one step forward, one step back, and they didn't make the move, and that's why Tavares is still out there right now, and Tavares could go the way of Stamkos and wait until the last minute to either sign with them or go someplace else. And do you want to get into that conversation? Because Montreal no, goes God. On. Well, Montreal. Uh, to me, that's his likely landing spot. Oh, God. <laughs> it's not. Le- it's not the Leafs. Please no. Um, Please no. But you know, like I, I think with with JVR, it's it's you know that's a wait and see. Uh, people are always like trade, trade, trade yeah. him. I am okay with them just losing him to free agent. Free agency life. I like if, JVR. If he yeah. if he plays great, yeah. and if they go far, and you know that you've got the depth to cover it, and you never got the deal, you never got the deal worked out. I heard that somebody wasn't answering their phone at the draft. That's what I heard too, and that's why that deal didn't happen. That's yeah. what I heard. I mean, I'm sure it's part of the reason it didn't happen. I'm sure there's fail safes in place. Um. But again, to talk about the difference between now and a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago we we're talking about like there is no move to make. Right now, it's frustrating as fans and you know as you know just people trying to figure out what the hell's going on. It's frustrating to think of hypotheticals, but there's there are moves to be made. Yeah. So like you know you're talking about asset management. They haven't done it yet, but like if we just if we look at potential moves, there's. So many options. Well, well and, and, sorry to interrupt you, Mike, but no, just okay. a second. If Lilligren does come in and impress, mm-hmm. like the way Mitch Marner did last year, and I know Mitch Marner spent a year in junior before coming to the Leafs. Right. Slightly. Let's just say he does. Mm-hmm. Does that not then put, you've got Carrick, you've got Zaitsev, and you've got Lilligren on the right side, mm-hmm. and that puts Hainsey in the spot. Like, let's say it's Lilligren and Dermott who are like, can't miss, have to make the team. Does that put Hainsey in the 6-7 spot which where he should be? And yeah, then somebody inevitably goes down for an injury, uh, or they they rotate guys out. So Dermot, Dermot, and Lilligren get rotated out, or something like I don't know what the right if, deal if is. If Lilligren makes the team, then probably Dermot doesn't, because then you move Hainsey over to the left side. You've got Gardner, Riley, Hainsey on the left. You're probably L- right. Lilligren, yeah. get Lilligren, uh, Carrick, and Zaitsev on the on the right side, and then you probably probably Marinson and Marchenko as your seven eight. Right. So, yeah. so you could you could put Hainsey and Lilligren together, right. and they you've got right. one dependable and one like, woo, he's really right. good. But we're expecting bad things to happen sometimes. <laughs> now it's 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 funny because we've heard the speculation over the last month or so about JVR and then of Bozak. I of 
am of the opinion that there are there's a greater chance of them trading JBR than Bozak. Because, well, where's the where's the depth at center? Right, exactly. Dominic will Dominic Moore be your number three? Colin uh, Greening is a good friend of mine, Adam. How dare you? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> listen, nothing yeah. against Colin Greening, but it seems like that's not what they wanted. To, they could have done that last year. Yeah, I mean, unless you know the the, uh, the elephant in the room is do they want to move Neilander to center? Which I know that Babcock has said no, we don't want to do that. We're going to keep him where he is. Um, my particular theory is they don't want to do that because if he has a big offensive year and they have moved him to center, then that six million that they probably would pay him on a long term deal just became seven and a half. Right, because you know, he's a centerman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you keep him on the you keep him on the wing, and he scores 60, 65, 70 points with Matthews. Okay, it's great, and he and he's showing a lot of potential. But he's not playing the position that everybody thinks that he's eventually going to play, and playing center in the NHL. You know, if you if you're scoring that kind of that amount of points at center, you're hitting the bank. You're you're going to get seven and a half. You're going to get you're going to get Ryan O'Hanson. You're going to get eight million. You know, two years of sixty plus, but you're going to get eight million a year. And now and and now, <laughs> if you keep him, if you keep him at right wing, it could be you know it could be a bridge deal for four four and a half or like Kucherov was three years at less than five million. Oh my God, what which a is stupid deal. Which which is which is a great deal in the short term for Tampa, but a ridiculously bad deal in the long term because the, it's it's PK Subban all over yeah. again. They're going to get especially with Kalorn. Yeah, with the, especially with Kalorn's <laughs> deal, right? Yeah. Kalorn, you know, and scoring what was it twenty five, thirty points? Uh, I'm going to step on this. Marlo Matthews Marner. Marner, the the triple M line, JVR, Nylander, uh, Mar- Kapanen, <laughs> and then what's Bozak? Gone. <laughs> <laughs> Traded. <laughs> well, no, uh, okay. My, the I don't know that- why you split up Matthews and Marner though, or Matthews and Nylander. Yeah, you're, Fine, oh, you know, who cares? Oh, he we, wants it because it's the three. No, arms. no, it's, 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 it's linear. No, <laughs> I, I, I have to to put. Nylander at center. Oh, certainly not moving Matthews to the wing. My my thought there is yes, there will be growing pains with Nylander, but like it's not like Bozak's wicked defensively. No, but he's a great faceoff guy. Yeah, and, and you've yeah. got Kadri too, right? It's not like he has to come in and be the second guy; he can be the third guy. The third. And and uh, I let's just say this: a year down the line, I think that the right winger on Austin Matthews' line is going to be Jeremy Bracco. Whoa! Really? Yeah. That's a big if. Yeah, I mean, not this year. Brocco's going to play with the Marlies. He's got to, you know, there are concerns at the defensive end of the ice. You as know, there is with every player as there is junior. With, right, exactly. <laughs> like, but but him and Matthews played together in the under-18s and lit it up. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, I think their game, Brocco is more of a playmaking winger. Matthews is more of a shooting center. I think that combo works well. And I think that, you know, when you have to maybe move some people out for salary reasons, having Brocco making 925, you know, I, I think it's not going to take long for for them to want to bring him back, bring right. him up. 